Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. First, Happy New Year. Welcome to the first episode of 2023. Now, based on episode 96, my conversation with Maestro Alon Wolf, recorded in Magico's bespoke, one-of-a-kind, and magical listening room, you'll recall that I've promised a factory tour of the Magico facility in Hayward, California. And that is what I'll be sharing here today, part one of that tour. Now, when I arrived at Magico's state-of-the-art, 30,000 square foot facility and office space located off the gated corporate place industrial development area on the eastern shore of the San Francisco Bay, I was welcomed by Dave Shackleton, Magico's Vice President of Operations. The moment I stepped through the foyer entrance into the large open space containing a museum of sorts, with an entire wall to the right uh, adorned with framed magazine covers, it was clear that I was in for a treat. Now, I was met almost immediately by Alan Wolf, Magico's founder and chief designer, as I was still taking in everything this space had to offer. Among the standouts, immediately in front of the doorway, stood a single, static, Magico Ultimate loudspeaker. The speaker that was the result of four years' worth of Alon's experimentation with very large horns and compression drivers, done initially merely to satisfy himself that he hadn't overlooked any technologies. Now, down a short corridor to the right was the newly assembled and utterly astounding new listening room, where I heard the M9s and filmed my episode 96, the interview with Alon. Now, I've included a link to a time-lapse video that Magico made as they built this room in today's description. I think you might want to check it out. It's pretty amazing. And straight ahead was a smaller museum space of sorts, loaded with the skeletons of some models and completed versions of others, including many S, early M, and original Q-series products. Moving through a doorway on the back wall of that space, we entered into one of the quality control areas, where a Klippel distortion analyzer system, which employs an extensive array of microphones, is used to check each production speaker and driver. Here, they are tested to make sure there are no buzzing or other noise artifacts, as well as recording their impedance and assessing the higher harmonic distortions. Continuing on through this space uh, and out its back door, we enter the final QC and packaging area. Here, all products are given the last pass of cleaning before packaging and storage for shipment. Now, this space, besides hosting the active final preparation of products for their packaging, was loaded with A1s, A-subs, A3s, A5s, and S5s, awaiting final prep before packaging, as well as several sets of already crated M2s, M3s, and M5s awaiting their final destinations. Now, turning to the right and heading west, we moved past more carefully arranged and easily accessible storage full of products, and approached a very important area. Now, Magico champions and employs a broad variety of technologies, including such new and significant tools as the Klippel near-field scanner and a laser vibrometer system. Now, both technologies help along push boundaries, in some ways resetting the bar for what can be achieved today with the fabrication of a high-performance loudspeaker. Now, I must point out that much of the audio portions of the videos I recorded there are a bit noisy and challenging to hear. Uh, aside from the loud background noise created by the CNC milling heard in the background, the auto gimbaled recorder I was using was being held directly in front of my face. As such, an artifact of what I recorded, uh, its very sensitive miking system, along with capturing much of the audio I wanted to record, all too readily picked up the sounds of my breathing as I exhaled and the wind from my mouth hit the microphones. Now, I apologize for that distraction, but this is some pretty interesting and important information. So, I hope you won't be too harsh on your judgments of the audio portion of this segment. I think you'll find it worthwhile. 
Now, in this first clip, um, besides hearing from Alon and Dave, we will hear from Magico's Chief Technology Officer, Yair Temen, who, during my visit, was joining us and running the Clipple process remotely from Tel Aviv, Israel. Now, once Yair has concluded the description of how the $100,000 Clipple near-field scanning system is utilized, Dave will take us through a very nice explanation of their use of laser vibrometry, including some nice computer animations of how it works, what it reveals, and a comparison to other similar sized speakers from different manufacturers. Now, I apologize. You may have to listen closely because of all the unavoidable ambient noise in that area, but let's take a look. This is where uh, we do uh, uh, advanced of our uh, actual uh, measurement. Uh, both for design purposes and for uh, uh, actual uh, finished results and uh, we will show you how the clipper uh, works this is a machine that uh, uh, we are uh, extremely uh, happy and proud to to have which allows us to uh, to do measurement that until uh, this uh, became available was uh, you could only do it in an aquatic chamber um, and also, it would take a tremendous amount of time to uh, uh, to actual uh, uh, fulfill because of the amount of the measurement that uh, is required. We do close to 3,000 we measure 3,000 points in space, uh, and here we will show you how it works, so you'll uh, you'll be able to understand it fully. Also, allows us to accurately measure much lower than you would be able, even in a even in an anechoic chamber with weeks of weeks of testing all these thousands of points. Are you there available? Yeah, he should be. He's okay. sitting here. He can. Yeah, you're there. Hi. Let's talk to Greg. So here is our CTO. He's in Tel Aviv right now. And he runs this machine from there, so he can uh, wow. explain to you how this thing is working. Hi. Hello there. Okay, so um, basically, what the, the problem we are trying to to solve with this uh, device is, is is two. First of all, uh, trying to do measurements in an, uh, a standard environment and not in an echoic chamber. Right. And the other thing we try to tackle is the automation of uh, building a very uh, large scale of product of points that we're doing the measurements in. So basically, uh, what uh, is being done with uh, this PC and uh, with this uh, device is that we are like measuring 3,000 points in, and let me. Can I take over? Sure. It's not yours, yeah. Okay. So, we are building two cylinders uh, of points. Uh, and, and those two cylinders of points are actually taking two measurements uh, at uh, a very uh, approximate two points. It's like two shells. And actually, due to this technique, we are able to separate what's coming from the speaker and what's coming from the environment. And by this way, we are able to uh, eliminate what's coming from the room and basically also do multiple measurements in order to get a whole balloon of measurements. It's called a balloon usually. It's what's all around the speaker. So, if you look at the screen that I just opened, you see that we get a lot, like, basically hundreds of measurements, and they are combined into uh, various, uh, let's say, uh, averages, calculations, that gives us the estimation what will be in a room, what, uh, what reflections are expected, what is the behavior of the speakers in terms of their activity, uh, basically giving us a complete picture of the speaker in the frequency domain. This is, of course, not everything, because 
not everything is expressed in the frequency domain, but this is, enables us to to have the amount of data that was not possible uh, before in an automated way and in a normal environment. And the advantage of that is that doing those type of measurements manually in an anechoic chamber takes a very good technician uh, at least two to three weeks to do what we do in a day. So the possibility to tune exactly uh, not in theory, but in practice, uh, crossovers, design, drivers, various panels. Uh, what we can achieve is done uh, in a way that was so time consuming before, it was not even practical to do. Because if you needed to, to, to spend uh, like two weeks or three weeks of, on any crossover change, you basically will not do that. So you will try to get into a very good position and then you will, you will need to uh, live up with the, the issue that you cannot do like 10 or 20 or 30 measurements per speaker, what we are doing today very easily because it only takes us one night to get the measurements of the whole speaker and improve this dramatically. So this is what uh, the NFS uh, tool gives us. And uh, this is, by the way, the A5. Cool, and, very uh, cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good speaker. Yes, it is. And thank you for the explanation. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, and if you want, we, uh, they will show you now the, the laser. Sure, thanks. Okay, thank you. This is our laser vibrometer. Um, what we're able to do here is set up a virtual grid um, on any any area of the speaker. And for any new speaker development, we would uh, measure every side. And once we're uh, able to set up this grid with all these measurement points, the laser is going to move from point to point around the speaker while we run frequency through it. And we're going to see uh, how lively it's getting at each one of those points and we'll even take it to a 3D animation of uh, how, the, how the cabinet is moving. So you're, you're measuring cabinet vibration with the laser, the reflected laser light yeah. and the computing system. Cool. Now how long does it take to do the, the whole uh, analysis with this device? Well, just the, just the measurement uh, will take between 30 and 60 minutes per side. That's not too bad. Of a speaker. Uh, but then the uh, yeah, you're doing the analysis will take uh, take longer than that. We sometimes do run it overnight though, the laser to get a very in-depth scan. Here we have a here we have a pretty uh, a pretty coarse coarse grid, um, but we can set up however many hundreds or thousands of points that we want. Cool. Uh, and based on what we get from that, um, we're able to see what areas we need to address with either extra damping, extra bracing, any areas that are getting any more lively than they should. So it kind of lets you identify hot spots and problem areas. Exactly. And Yair yeah, will show you right here um, uh, uh, a 3D animation of our A5 over here uh, versus um, kind of a, com a competitor's uh, similar similar range, <laughs> range speaker. Um, and as you can see, the reds, the reds and purples are the extra lively parts. Um, and can see uh, kind of how how inert the A5 is, barely barely exiting the kind of blue and green range. Pretty interesting stuff. Pretty cool. We Brent. Yeah. Well, uh, what you're saying is uh, uh, on the surface level, what we are all doing more than that is we developed uh, together uh, uh, with Clipper a very precise tool to know the exact uh, SPL generated on a distance uh, and we know exactly the effect in terms of uh, what noise is, what noise the cabinet is making at what, at what distance and how it affects the sound and you will be amazed to see that People think that the cabinet uh, contribution is very low, but I can assure you that the cabinet contribution many, many times is much higher than the driver's distortion. 
So if we are picky about our drivers, we should also be very, very picky about our enclosures. I totally understand that philosophy. It makes perfect sense. I think you'll agree that is some pretty fascinating and impressive design work being done at Magico. Well, that is all the time we have for part one of this visit today. Now watch for part two, as well as the final episode on my simply unsurpassed listening impressions of the M9 to drop here soon. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop in. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in uh, today's description section or in my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, Happy New Year and cheers.